Welcome back to PSC's Tech Byte. This week I want to talk with you about how to consume SharePoint online content from SharePoint framework using the PMP.js library. The PMP.js library is a fluent API for JavaScript based on an open source project that you can find on GitHub and which is based on community effort. You can use the PMP.js library in TypeScript within SharePoint Framework or in JavaScript or in Node.js or more in general, wherever you have JavaScript libraries access. You can install the PMP.js library through npm and it will be available under add pmp slash the name of the package that you want to install. In fact, the PMP.js library is based on a bunch of packages uh, divided by context, by topic. So you can use the common one, which is the most used one and at the very basic of every uh, usage of the PMP.js library. You can install and use the SP uh, package, the logging package, the graph one and so on and so forth. To consume SharePoint online content within SharePoint Framework, you will need to install a basic set of packages from NPM, as you can see on this slide. Then you will be able to import, for example, the SP uh, type from the SP package, and you will be able to set it up using the setup method that is provided by the ESP type. And then you can simply access the SharePoint online content through the Fluent API. So you can say sp.web.lists to access the collection of lists. You can get a specific list by title. You can get the items of a list and so on and so forth. So let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to play in practice with the PMPJS library within a SharePoint framework. So here we are in Visual Studio Code and we have uh, a client-side web part uh, which is using uh, PMPJS to query items uh, of a list uh, in a site. As you can see, this client-side web part uh, has the import of the type SP as we saw on the slide deck, and that's why I have uh, the npm install for logging common data and SP uh, dash dash save to store those information in the package JSON file. So once you have installed the npm packages and once uh, you have imported the SP type, uh, you can, for example, override the onInit method of the client side web part so that after the onInit of the super type, uh, you can set up the SP type providing as the SP SPFX context value the context of the current side uh, client side web part. Then <coughs> we have a load items method which we provide to a, a React component uh, as a member of the properties of the React component. Uh, and this method will give back uh, uh, a collection, an array of I list item types, where every single I list item is made by a title and by a color. In fact, we are going to select items from a list uh, in which we have uh, a collection of items made of title and color. Moreover, in the uh, React component uh, for this web part, we have a button and inside the load list item of the button, we simply invoke the uh, load list item method of the um, client side web part uh, to get the list of items and to show them in the uh, console. So the real interesting part, the real meat uh, is here in the load list items method of the client side web part uh, in which we use the Fluent API and we say SharePoint dot web, or as you can see, we can access the site, the social capabilities, the navigation, the profiles and so on and so forth. Within the web, we access the collection of lists. We get a specific list by title, which will be list by colors. We get the items in that list and we get all of the items in that list. And we return them as a fully typed result uh, accordingly to the TypeScript uh, development paradigm. So we can just run this uh, client side web part and see how it behaves uh, in action. And then we can play around it to slightly change the code and see what will happen uh, to the uh, uh, solution to the uh, overall result of this client side web part. It will be almost ready in a matter of few seconds uh, as soon as we will see the reload method. And here we are. And so here I am in the client side web part hosted in the workbench and I can simply click on the load list items button and I can see in the console window I have uh, five items, which are the items I have in this list uh, in my modern site. In fact, if I open any of these items, we can see we have a color, we have a title and so on and so forth. 
Right now, we are getting all of the uh, metadata properties of every single item, which is even more than what we really need. So I can go back here and I can say that of the items, I want to select just the title and the color, for example. And for example, I can also say that I want to order by color uh, ascending. So this will be my query, my camel query, as you can see, based on a Fluent API. And then I can say get all to still get all of the items, or I can say just get to get the first uh, uh, set of items. I can even do paging, so I can say top and say give me the top uh, 100 items. Of course, we have more than uh, less than 100 items in our list, but uh, who cares? It's just for the sake of making an example. And this will be the syntax, the fluent syntax to make the query. Let me save uh, this updated client side web part and let me execute again uh, the request in the page. So I will refresh my page and click again on the uh, get list items, load list items button. So refresh, let's clean the console and load the items. And again, we have five items. And now for every single item, we just have the color, the title, and of course the out of the box uh, metadata properties of the open data uh, protocol. So a smaller response uh, and a more optimized request for SharePoint. If we go to the network section, we can see that somewhere here, let me stop the recording to make it easier for me. We will have uh, the request for the items that we just consumed. So if I'm lucky enough, I will be able to see the request for items should be somewhere here in this list, here it is. And here we are uh, with a list of items to select the title and the color with an order by color ascending and with the top 100. And this will be the JSON response uh, from SharePoint Online. Under the cover, the PMPJS library made this request for me and made my life easier, allowing me to use just this fluent uh, uh, syntax, this fluent API. You can do a lot of stuff with PMPJS. Today we cover just the querying of items in a list. In the near future, we will cover much more uh, topics. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.